Hi there, this is Prof. Johan from the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Pretoria. Welcome to my series on the Introduction to Chemical Engineering and Chemical Engineering Principles. In today's video lecture, I want to talk to you guys about empirical formula. Now, most of you know what normal equations of formula are. Let's take an example. Equation for velocity. So, U equals S over T. With U being in meters per second, where the left-hand side, U, is in length over time, or meters per second. And the right hand side, and this is S over T, is also in length over time or in meters per second in the SI units. So this equation is dimensionally consistent. The left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Now what is an empirical formula? So let's say for instance we have a set of data given by this table. We now go and we plot this data. And you can see we have a graph for the convective heat transfer coefficient in the units of watt per meter Kelvin as a function of the velocity in meters per second. Looking at the data, we can see that there's not a straightforward relationship between the convective heat transfer coefficient and velocity. Initially, it looks like linear behavior with some sort of decay function reaching a maximum and then plateauing off. And this is what the data looks like when we connect all the data points. Let's now look at the first part of the data. Remember, these were experimental results. We did some sort of experiment. We got some data points, these here, and then we plotted them. We can now go and fit some sort of straight line through these first data points. And that's what we've done, with this being the equation for that straight line. Now that equation there is an empirical formula because there's no relationship to what is happening on the left-hand side of the equation to what is happening on the right-hand side of the equation. So if I would have written this down, the left-hand side of this equation will have units of watt per meter squared Kelvin, and the right-hand side of the equation would have had units of meters per second. So there's no way that we can actually get the left-hand side to be equal to the right-hand side. And this is what the second half of the data looks like. Here again, we can fit some sort of function to the experimental data points that we have. And this function will now describe what those data points look like. And we can see that the trend line does not exactly sit over all the data points because it's some sort of fit. This is also an empirical formula, or empirical equation, because the left-hand side will yet again be watt per meter squared Kelvin, which is not the same as the right-hand side, which will be in meters per second. So basically what an empirical formula is, is it's some sort of formula we derive from experimental data, which is not dimensionally consistent, to describe some sort of parameter, in this case the heat transfer coefficient, in terms of another parameter, in this case the fluid superficial velocity. So we can see for this data set we actually broke this into three regions. The last region we didn't do anything with. The second section we fitted some sort of polynomial function to give us a relationship between the convective heat transfer coefficient and the superficial fluid velocity. And in the first section we fitted some sort of linear relationship between the superficial velocity to calculate the convective heat transfer coefficient. Both of these two equations were just fitted to the data and are not real, scientific, true or valid equations. And we know that we're not describing the whole area, we're just describing some sort of area. So frequently empirical formulas will only be valid in certain ranges. For example, the polynomial function here will only be for fluid velocities bigger than 3 and smaller than 10. Let's look at some other examples of empirical formula. For instance, U equals 1.08 K over CP rho, with U in foot per second, and it's a velocity, with K in BTU, British Thermal Units, which is an energy unit, over foot hour degrees Fahrenheit, and this is a conductive heat transfer coefficient. Cp in units of BTU over pound degrees Fahrenheit, and Cp is the specific heat capacity. And then lastly, we have the density rho in units of pound per cubic foot. Looking at this, we see that the left-hand side of the equation is in foot per second, and the right-hand side of the equation is in foot squared per hour. This is not dimensionally consistent. 
The second example I want to give you today is that of the saturation pressure with A and B sum constants. P is in kPa and T is in Kelvin. And we can see that the left hand side and the right hand side is definitely not dimensionally consistent. Third example is UD to the power of a quarter equals D to the power of a half G to the power of a quarter. In this equation, U is the velocity in units of meters per second. D is in meters and is the diameter. D is in meters squared per second and is the diffusivity. And G is gravitational acceleration in meters per second squared. And yet again, we can see that the left hand side is definitely not equal to the right hand side. This equation describes some diffusion parameter as a function of the diameter of a system and the velocity in the system. D. The last example of such an empirical equation I want to give you is T equals rho plus B over CP. B sum constant, T in Kelvins. Rho in kilogram per cubic meter, CP in BTU kilogram degrees Fahrenheit. Now, in all four of these examples that I gave you, you should note the following. For you to calculate U in foot per second in the first equation, you must enter K in BTU foot hour degree Fahrenheit, CP in BTU over pound per, per degree Fahrenheit, and Rho in pound per cubic foot. You cannot enter U, K, C, P, or Rho in any other units but the imperial units given there. For the last example, number four, T will be calculated in Kelvin when you enter Rho in kilogram per cubic meter and C, P in BTU over kilogram degree Fahrenheit. Nothing else will work. And that's the thing about empirical formula. You can only use in the form given, and you can only use the variables in the units given. If I, for instance, want to calculate P in PSI in equation 2, I can do this, but I first have to enter T in Kelvin, calculate P in KPA, and then convert that to PSI. Otherwise, the equation will not hold true. I hope you found this lesson useful. I'll be back soon with another video.